Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the torque slip characteristics of a three phase induction motor. Subscribe the channel for more videos and notification. Soft copy of this material available in the drive, link is given in the description box. Now we will go to the topic, torque slip characteristics of three phase induction motor. The curve obtained by plotting the torque against the slip is called the torque slip characteristics of induction motor. The curve is drawn, drawn between torque and slip. Now we will see the details about what is the relation between torque and slip. When the induction motor is loaded, the speed decreases. Therefore, the slip will increases. The slip is nothing but the difference in speed between actual speed and synchronous speed. So, when the motor is loaded, the actual speed of the motor decreases. So, there is a difference between actual speed and synchronous speed. So, that is why the slip also increases. But due to increased load, the motor must produce more torque to meet the load demand. So, while loaded, speed decreases, but the motor will try to meet the required demand by producing the more torque. So, the slip increases, torque also increases. So, the torque is depends upon the slip, right. So, when it is loaded, speed decreases, torque slip increases and same time in order to meet the load torque also increases so all are interrelated so that so it is clear that the torque is depends upon the slip so we know that then uh, the expression for torque t equal to k into s e2 square r2 divided by r2 square plus s2 square x2 square so this is the expression for the torque so for, for a constant supply voltage if the supply voltage is constant we can take E2 will be constant. This E2 we can take it as constant. So that we can write the torque equation as T is directly proportional to S R2 divided by R2 square plus S X to the whole square. So it is depends upon R2, X2 and slip. Depends upon this parameter. When S equal to 0, when S equal to 0, the torque is also 0. So, the curve starts at the 0. So, the initial curve is starting at 0, 0 value because S is 0 mean torque also 0. Now, we will go to that there are two regions available low slip region and high slip region. In this low slip region, when the speed of the rotor is close to the synchronous speed, that is actual speed and synchronous speed is almost nearer, mean the slip is very small. The slip is nothing but difference between the synchronous speed and actual speed. Suppose synchronous speed and actual speed is nearer mean automatically slip is very very small. So that S x2 square value is very small. S is already small mean S x2 will be very very small compared to R2 square. So we can neglect the S x2 square. In the torque equation we can neglect the S x2 square because when the speed is low when the speed is nearer to the rotor speed, the slip is very less. So that this slip is very less mean S x2 square become very very less. So that we can neglect compared to R2 we can neglect this term. So this is the normal torque equation S R2 divided by R2 square plus X x2 square. In this we are going to neglect this term S x2 square. So it become S R2 divided by R2 square. So, from this it is very clear that the torque is proportional to slip. So, when the slip increases, the torque also increases. So, during low slip region, torque is proportional to the slip. Both are directly proportional. Now, we will see the diagram. For low value of slip, torque is directly proportional to the slip. So, the graph is a straight line. Both T and the torque and slip are directly proportional. So, almost we will get the straight line. So, we will see the diagram, this graph. So, the x axis the slip is the data slip is given. In y axis we have torque. The graph is drawn between the slip and torque. So, this, this is 0 value, s equal to 0, slip equal to 0. So, this is the low slip region, this one high slip region. During low slip region we, we conclude that T is directly proportional to S. When the slip increases, torque also increases. So, we are getting the straight line, right? Both are proportional. So, at this point, it is maximum S equal to S sum. 
right slip corresponding to the maximum so this is the maximum torque t max so this is half of the person is almost full load torque tfl tfl is nothing but full load torque right so s equal to 0 means the torque and slip both are 0 the curve starts at 0 when the during low 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 slip region torque increases slip increases torque also increases so we are getting the straight line so this is the maximum point maximum torque and this is the corresponding to slip value so after this what will happen this is the high slip region the torque decreases in a hyper hyperbolic manner keep on decreases so this is the starting torque so almost we have some value starting torque t start and become zero and reaches zero at s equal to one right so before so before this maximum torque there is during low slip region torque keep on increases and reaches the maximum value after maximum value keep on decreases and reaches the zero value so beyond the maximum torque if you load the motor the speed decreases slowly and it will reach the zero value and the motor will stop so we can load up to the maximum torque beyond maximum torque if the motor is loaded what will happen the torque decreases and and becomes zero so the motor will also will stop we'll and we'll see this analysis during the high slip region how the torque is inversely proportional we'll see the details we'll see the details of high slip region right so this is the entire uh, slip torque slip characteristic low slip region and high slip region so the, we'll see the analysis of this high slip region so during high slip region as the load increases the speed is decreases while increasing the load speed will decrease so the slip will increases speed decreases mean there is a difference between the synchronous speed and actual speed so that slip will increases the torque increases and reaches the maximum value right so the torque will increases that is t max that s equal to s sum the condition is r2 by x2 this is a condition for maximum torque right so the load increases speed decreases but slip increases and torque reaches the maximum value so this torque is called a pull out torque or breakdown torque or stalling torque the torque at the maximum point when further increase in the motor load the speed decreases and slip increases and its value approaches the unity so it will if you keep on increase the load what will happen the speed decreases and slip increases and the say the slip value will be almost unity right so that we can see in the diagram so this is the maximum torque thereafter if you keep on increase the torque decreases slowly at the time the slip will be equal to 1 here the slip is 0 here slip is 1 here this slip is corresponding to maximum torque and also this is the maximum torque value so if we keep on load the motor torque decreases and slip value become 1 now we will see analyze what will happen if the slip equal to 1 slip is equal to 1 become what will happen so r2 square it is more is very less than s x2 square right this value is very lesser this value will be more so that we can neglect the r2 square resistance value in previous case we neglect the reactance value now we are can neglect the resistance value because this s is approaching to 1 so this value will be more in previous case the s is very less while squaring it become very very less so that we can neglect this term now s is equal to 1 so when x x square x2 square is more value than r2 square so we can neglect this r2 square so this is a normal torque equation s r2 divided by r2 square plus s x to the whole square so in this we are neglecting this r2 square so what will happen s r2 divided by s2 square into x2 square now we'll go for further simplification so if you take r2 and x2 are constant mean only we have s divided by s2 square r2 and x2 become constant so the one s got cancelled so what we got t is directly proportional to 1 by s that's why the torque and slip are inversely proportional so that in the diagram we clearly noted that 
after the maximum torque during high slip region the torque decreases so that relation is given clearly here t is directly proportional to 1 by s in low slip region t is directly proportional to s right so this is coming under high slip region so uh, now as load increases the speed decreases so the slip increases but then t is directly proportional to 1 by s so the torque decreases right so this curve is a rectangular hyperbola 1 divided by s suppose if you be beyond the maximum torque if we increase what will happen what is the conclusion so beyond the point of maximum torque any further increase in the motor load result in decrease of torque develop so beyond the maximum point if you increase the load further what will happen the torque will be decreases so the motor speed will slowly slow down and become stop so from that it is clear that we can load up to maximum torque t max s equal to sm beyond that the torque will decreases so we need to identify the maximum torque value up to that we can load the induction motor three phase induction motor so in this video we discuss about the torque slip characteristics of a induction motor with two region low slip region and high slip region during low slip region torque and slip are directly proportional during high slip region it is inversely proportional and we conclude that of beyond the maximum torque the speed will while increasing the load the speed decreases slowly so that the motor also motor speed decreases and become uh, step down the motor become stops subscribe the channel for more videos and notification soft copy of this material available in the drive link is given in the description box thank you for listening